Mr. CB, CB Libitsky. So CB, uh, you have that smile. I love that little smile. It's like a little wink of mischievousness. So you're the chief R&D and uh, sustainability officer at Unilever Tea Company. And Unilever is a company that's all about production. How, or um, oh, what would you say is a, uh, that you guys are doing to counteract those uh, negative impact of massive productions in terms of resources and, uh, and land use? Um, yes, th thank you for the question. And what a powerful uh, uh, speech from, from the predecessors. So, so, so really energized to, to, to talk further about it. And it's impossible not to refer to the beginning of our journey in 2010 when some of the leaders realized the resource dependency of uh, companies at the scale of Unilever is just too high. We cannot continue growing with the same level of uh, resource uptake. And the Unilever Sustainable Living Plan was born uh, just then uh, to tackle the issue. And at the same time, help sectors uh, transition and transform to more sustainable models. Among that is our transition in tea, where 750,000 smallholder farmers uh, shifted, uh, shifted their approach. But we are in 2020 and the climate pressure and the pressure of, of resources is only uh, getting bigger and therefore doing less harm and sustainable models is not enough. And we need to think about how to build regenerative companies, the companies who can create positive impact. And as part of that, we embarked on our new journey uh, which is a climate and nature strategy uh, with a new set of commitments uh, which will uh, help us uh, land the uh, Paris commitment in terms of uh, uh, climate change, but also set uh, new guidelines and, and new approaches to our business model. As part of that, our home care division uh, will not use any further uh, fossil uh, materials in order to formulate our products. We will use uh, recycled and renewable materials. We will end uh, deforestation uh, going with commitments of virtually deforestation free uh, supply chain by 2023. Uh, we will open new business with 1 billion uh, of value and uh, moving away from dairy and through uh, meat uh, alternatives that Case was, was talking about. There is further commitments as part of that, but let me just uh, use one example which is closest to my heart, which is our uh, tea business uh, under Lipton brand, uh, the largest uh, part of, of the tea world, where we are trying to create this positive cycle. And our advantage here is that we have first mile transparency and traceability of the first mile as we produce tea in our own estates. And basically, we can see that we, with use of technology, with use of data, we can improve yields up to 50% while reducing the input uh, by further 20%. We see that we can actually promote biodiversity. More than 30% of, of the estates actually are high-value ecosystems where we increase biodiversity. Uh, within the collaboration with Crop Trust. Uh, we are also mapping biodiversity as a crop because as it is not uh, originally grown in Africa, we need to protect and expand biodiversity uh, of, of, this, uh, of this amazing plant. And, uh, you know, we, we can be talking further and further, but the next uh, 10 years, the next 20 years will be uh, the time of creating steps, decisive steps, towards positive impact and regenerating the planet rather than neutralizing uh, uh, our influence. So, so yeah, just a few words uh, to, say, to say impossible to, to share everything. I just wanted to acknowledge many people on the panel as well uh, playing a huge role uh, on, this, on this journey. So uh, handing over to you and, and further discussion. So, CV, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have one more question because all the panelists are, you know, you're the game changers in, in this massive, uh, you know, this challenge that we have as to save humanity, as Valerie was saying, uh, and as, as humans and, uh, and this planet. But, CV, where do you see the hope working in, in such a big company and being part of, of all those innovations and proposing new solutions? Where do you see the hope? 
Well, there are four sources of, of hope, to be honest, for me. Uh, there is kids, uh, there is scientists, there is startups, and there is nature. And the combination of all four, uh, I think, uh, gives us hope for the future because some of the invention, and I think Case referred to it previously, actually capturing CO2 to either create uh, packaging, novel packaging material, or to create new ingredients, uh, is, is just one example of completely shifting the paradigm of the food system. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, the startup companies, we see two, three times fold increase in technology flow and capital flow into smart agriculture and regenerative enterprises. So, personally, being very close to this area, this gives a lot of hope. And as well as a lot of corporate companies, uh, mentioned by Valerie, this movement, this energy, uh, and this commitment to uh, to drive the agenda further uh, collectively gives hope. There is so much to do, so I don't want to be over optimistic. But those would be few areas that stand out, and I would like to invite maybe others to to chip in and comment. But uh, that's a great uh, way of putting in uh, having that hope that we can uh, do things better.